You are tuned in to Greater Acquaintance Missionary Baptist Church located at 6758 South Wabash Avenue in Chicago, Illinois. I am Pastor Kevin Wilkes. Before we get started, first, I want to thank Reverend Gordon for saying yes when I asked her to present the seven last words on Palm Sunday. And if you were not here in the building, <coughs> if you were not here in the building, you missed a truly high-spirited, God-filled service. Amen. Amen. Then I want to thank Reverend Rose, my Reverend Missy, for bringing the word on Easter Sunday. Amen. I want to thank her for allowing God to use her in ways that she probably never imagined were possible. And just let me say this. There are many ministers and people who will not step foot in a church that has lady preachers, lady ministers, or lady pastors. And there are pastors and churches that will not allow a woman to teach the word of God. And better yet, to preach the word of God. But where will we be? If there wasn't a Eunice or a Lois who taught the word to Timothy and possibly to others, where would we be if there wasn't a Deborah who was chosen by God as a prophetess who on, led the Israelites in battle against the Canaanites? And where would we be if? There wasn't a Mary Magdalene who went to spread the word about the resurrection Christ. Come on, preacher. I want to thank Brother Wynn and Brother Mike for being so diligent with making sure we were live on Facebook. And for the very first time, we were live on YouTube. And I want to thank this congregation who thirst for the living word. Uh, who is excited to learn more about a man named Jesus. Who, who desires to have a greater acquaintance with God. Amen. Thank you. Thank you Let us go into the word. We are in the book of John, the 20th chapter. John, the 20th chapter. And I think our bulletin and what we have advertised, we were going to be doing verses 24 through 29. I'm going to switch it up just a little. And we're going to be looking at verses 19 through 28. John, the 20th chapter, verses 19 through 28, and for all those who are able, 
Please stand for the reading of the word. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had said, so he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Just that part right there is doing a little bit something to my spirit. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you as my Father has sent me even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them. Oh, that's just a sermon all by itself. And said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost, whosoever, so, whoso, whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them, and Whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. Mm -hmm. But Thomas, one of the twelve called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord, but he said unto them, Except I shall see his hands, the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I would not believe. And after eight days, again his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut. And stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Then said he to Thomas, Reach hither thy fingers and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of the word for the edification of our souls. Look at somebody and say, Where is your faith? Where is your faith? Come on now. Where is your faith? Where is your faith? Where is your faith? There's a saying that is popular these days, and you probably have seen or heard it on one of the social media sites. It says, I was today old when I learned. And then it will tell you something that you probably never knew. For instance, did you know that the word silent and the word listen have the exact same letters in it? Y'all want to be writing that down. I know y'all are. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Did you know that the brown plastic pill bottle that you get from the pharmacy with the white cap that you have to push down and turn at the same time, uh, uh, making it kind of hard for older people and for those with arthritis to take off. Yeah. If when you get it off, just turn that cap upside down. 
and you can twist it on and off like just like a regular job. Come on. Mm. Yep. And did you know <laughs> that we have been brainwashed into believing that Easter is only one day of the year. Mm. Mm. Come on now. Come on, preacher. Our job gives us off one day for Easter. The stores advertise that Easter is one day. Even the calendar says Easter is one day. But Easter season is actually 50 days. We think that when they crucified Jesus and then three days he rose, we think that was the end. We think that when the stone was rolled away and all that they saw were his burial clothes, we think that was the end. We think that when the women went to the tomb to pour birth perfume on his body, but he wasn't there, we think huh, that was the end. Come on now, we think that when the disciples walked on the road of the Maus and without realizing who he was, Jesus joined them and they started telling Jesus about what Jesus <laughs> did. Uh, we think that was the end. <clears throat> when I first started studying for this sermon, I was going to title it The End. But it wasn't the end, <laughs> it was just the beginning. Yes, yes, yes. Here in chapter 20, Mary Magdalene goes to the tomb and finds Jesus is gone. She runs and tells Peter and John, and they start running to the tomb, but others get word of what has happened, and they actually beat Peter and John there. When Peter and John arrived and saw that Jesus was no longer in the tomb, they left. But Mary, she stayed there. And while she was there, she started to cry. But Mary didn't realize when Jesus asked her, why are you crying? She didn't know it was him until he said, Mary. And then she recognized his voice. For John 10, 27 says, My sheep <laughs> shall hear my voice and follow me. Mary recognized Jesus' voice. And she looked at them and she said, Rabboni. Which means master, teacher. <clears throat> mm -hmm. She ran and told the disciples what had happened. And later that evening, Jesus walked through the shut doors where the disciples had locked themselves in. And Jesus said, peace be unto you. Well, Thomas was not with the disciples when Jesus appeared. Now, we don't know much about Thomas. Matthew, Mark, and Luke only mention Thomas one time. And that is when he is being identified 
with the other disciples. But it is John who gives us more insight as to who Thomas was. He tells us that Thomas was the one who, uh, when Jesus heard Lazarus was dead, Thomas said, let us go and die with him too. It was Thomas in John 14 when Jesus told the disciples he was going to prepare a place for them. Thomas said, Lord, we don't know where you're going. We learned in Mark 6 that Thomas's real name is Judah or Jew. He is not only a disciple, but he is the brother of Jesus. Jesus' own brother was not there when he first showed up. Uh. Jesus' own brother said, I'm not going to believe that Jesus was here unless I see his hands and the print of his nails and I have to put my finger in the hole where the nails were and I have to put my hand in his side. Then and only then will I believe Jesus was here. Jesus' own brother doubted Jesus's capability. But isn't that normally <laughs> how it is? Uh, come on now. Your own people are the ones who will doubt what you can do. Your own people are the ones who will question your motive. Your own people are the ones who will criticize your every move. It was Moses' siblings who said, who does he think he is? Does the Lord only speak to him? It was Joseph's brothers who said, you think you are so special. And then they threw him in the pit to die. It was Jesus' people who said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? It is always your own people who will give you the hardest time. We love to uh, sit back and judge Thomas for doubting. We love to sit back and judge Thomas for not having faith. But be honest. Come on, now. Ha, ha. Come on, Pastor. Come on, Pastor. Drop it down. Drop it down. Drop it down. When you have faith that Jesus was really returning, When you have believed that Jesus came back, Thomas watched his brother heal the sick. He, he watched his brother give sight to the blind. He watched his brother raise Lazarus from the dead. But he also watched while Jesus was placed on trial. And Jesus didn't say a mumbling word. He watched as they beat Jesus all night long. And Jesus didn't say a mumbling word. He watched as they nailed Jesus to the cross and placed the crown of thorns on his head. And Jesus didn't say a mumbling word. He watched as they pierced Jesus in his side and the blood fell to the ground and 
Jesus didn't say a mumbling word. Thomas watched as they removed Jesus' limp body from the cross, and now you want him to have faith that Jesus is back. Oh, it's easy to have faith when there's money in your bank account. It's easy to have faith when your children are doing what they're supposed to do and they acting right and everything is going good at school. It's easy to have faith when the job is patting you on your back and giving you raises and giving you promotions. It's easy to have faith when the flowers are blooming and the birds are singing and the sun is shining and the wind is blowing gently through your hair. It's easy to have faith then. But when you're sitting next to your loved one in the hospital, as they remove the tubes, and you're watching as they take their last breath, faith is not on your mind then. When your boo or your spouse tell you they're leaving you for someone else after you spend years and years uh, treating them like royalty while they treated you like garbage, uh, where's your faith now? When the doctor calls you up and say, you need to come in immediately, uh, they have something you need to be told, and you know it's got something to do with them lab tests, where's your faith? Where you're told your services are no longer needed. Your social security is being denied. Your link card is being uh, rejected. You have $2 in your account. Rent is due. Bills are past due. No food in the fridge. Don't tell me uh, Jesus will work it out. <laughs> Come on, Pastor. The sheriff's department is coming in the morning to put me out. Don't tell me Jesus got my back. The doctor has just said they've done all they can do. Faith just ain't working right now. I know all those scriptures. Faith without works is dead. Well, I haven't prayed and I haven't fasted. <laughs> I haven't given tithes. With faith, you can move mountains. I'm not trying to move a mountain. I'm just trying to kick a rock out the way for a moment. <laughs> Faith is not always the first thing popping up in your mind. Be honest. Let's go back to scripture. The next week of Easter, Jesus shows up. I need to do the different that one. Thomas is there. Jesus tells his brother to reach over and touch my hands. Feel where, where the nails uh, went in. Uh, reach over and put your hand in my sack. That's where the sword went. Jesus tells Thomas, stop doubting and start believing. Because you have seen me, you now believe. If I was teaching Bible study or Sunday school, right there, I would throw in Hebrews 11.1. 1. Yeah, yeah. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the 
evidence of things not seen. Come on now. Come on, Pastor. Make it plain. That's it. I haven't seen Jesus work the situation out yet. But I have enough faith to believe he will somehow, some way. I just can't see how Jesus is going to bring me through this, but I have faith to believe he can somehow, some way. Come on. I, I'm ready to just throw up my hands on this one because it seems impossible. But it's my faith that reminds me nothing is too hard for God. Come on, God, Pastor. If Abraham had faith to take his son up on the mountain mm -hmm. to sacrifice him. But when he got there, mm -hmm. God said, don't you touch a hair on his head. Look over there. There's a ram in the bush. Come on, preacher. If Daniel had enough faith to face a hungry lion in the den, and when they looked in, Daniel and the lion were sitting there. Daniel was rubbing the lion's head, going, oh, sweet putty cat. Ah, come on, preacher. If David had enough faith to fight against a giant with a slingshot. In a stone, where is your faith? Mm -hmm. If the woman who only had enough grain and enough oil to feed her and her son yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, come before on. they died, but instead she found Elijah. And next thing she knows, the grain is running over. Yeah. And the oil is running yeah. over. Where is your faith? Come on now. If God did it before, He can do it again. Yes. Yes. You just need to wait on the Lord and be of good courage. Because He may not come when you want Him. But He's always right on time. Yes, He is. Just as the lady with the 12 year issue of blood spent all her money on doctors and medicines. But when Jesus came back and she touched the hem of his garment, just as the three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when they were thrown into the fiery furnace, and King Nebuchadnezzar looked in, he said, I can swear. We only put in three. On, but it looks like there's four. And that fourth one yeah. looks yeah. like. Yeah. Just ask the disciples who were on that boat yeah. in the midst of a storm. On, and that boat started rocking. Come on now. Jesus got up and told those raging waters, peace. Yeah. Where is your faith? Yeah. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Yeah. Lean not unto thy own understanding. Yeah. For the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. My soul yeah. shall boast in the Lord. Yeah. The humble yeah. shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I know my time is running out, but I got to do this part. When that storm comes barreling through, thinking it's going to get me, 
that star better watch out for me because I know somebody when confused shows his ugly face and all hell breaks loose I know my God is not in that mess because my God is not the author of confusion let somebody tell me I can't let somebody tell me I won't and I'll tell them I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me because I know with God all things are possible when my friends and my family turn their backs on me when they start gossiping about me when they start lying on me I know somebody who I can count on what a friend we have in Jesus all our sins and griefs to bear what a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer he'll be my mother he'll be my father he'll be my brother he'll be my sister he'll be my doctor he'll be my lord he'll be my way out of nowhere he'll be my will in the middle of the wheel I have faith that he's my everything because 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 he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know who holds my future. And life, and life, and life is worth the living. Just because, just because. Just because, just because he lives. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you pray the Sunday. Just be saying the day. God wants you to have a great acquaintance with God. Won't you please contact us at www.greatacquaintancechurch.com. We would love to hear from you. Or give us a call at 773 488 2991. And as we always say here at Great Acquaintance, tell somebody you love them. Real, real, Jesus is real to me. Whoa! Come on, y'all.